Hello, my name is Ben Lovegrove and in this video I'm going to summarize the events of the last few weeks in relation to the disclosure of information about UFOs, UFO crash retrievals and related subjects. In January 2020 I uploaded a video entitled, Will 2020 be the year of disclosure? Will we confirm ET contact? I'm not a ufologist nor a researcher, I'm simply a commentator watching events unfold and expressing my opinions through this medium of video. But lately it's been an interesting few weeks during which a lot has happened, enough to keep genuine researchers busy for many months ahead. Cast your mind back to May and June when we were discussing more mundane things like a global pandemic, the collapse of civilization and the approaching apocalypse. Then in July, rumours began to circulate that journalists in the New York Times were conducting research for an article that would address the issues of UFOs or UAPs, crash retrievals, metamaterials and so on. There has been a lot of speculation and excitement since Brian Bender's famous article about ATIP that appeared on December the 16th 2017 entitled, The Pentagon's Secret Search for UFOs. That and the leaking of the three now famous videos and the fact that the US Navy issued new guidelines on the reporting of UAPs has brought the subject of UFOs stroke UAPs into the spotlight once again. On that very same day that Brian Bender's article was published, another appeared in the New York Times entitled, Two Navy Airmen and an Object That Accelerated Like Nothing I've Ever Seen written by Helen Cooper, Leslie Keane and Ralph Blumenthal. By the way, links to these articles and all the others mentioned in this video appear in the description area below. I encourage you to read them all in full and read the comments and the answers from the authors beneath them. So for two years or so we were left to contemplate these revelations. Then in April 2020 the US Navy confirmed that the three videos were indeed genuine, ending any speculation that they were probably hoaxes, no doubt much to the annoyance of fervent debunkers. The following month on the 14th of May the article, Navy reports describe encounters with unexplained flying objects by Ralph Blumenthal and Leslie Keane appeared in the New York Times. This was followed on the 26th of May by, wow what is that? Navy pilots report unexplained flying objects by Helen Cooper, Leslie Keane and Ralph Blumenthal. About two months later on July the 23rd we saw, no longer in shadows, Pentagon's UFO unit will make some findings public by Ralph Blumenthal and Leslie Keane. And five days later on July the 28th, Blumenthal and Keane continued with, do we believe in UFOs? That's the wrong question, which begins with a byline, reporting on the Pentagon program that's investigating unidentified flying objects is not about belief. It's about a vigilant search for facts. All these articles are of course based around the incidents involving the US Navy, but they also led to TV programs like the History Channel's Unidentified in which we watched as former ATIP leader Louis Elizondo and his colleagues in the TTSA investigated encounters with military personnel in the wars in the Middle East, Afghanistan and Vietnam. So the emphasis throughout has been on identifying objects that have an obvious interest in the US military and which may pose a threat since they are clearly capable of outperforming anything that the Americans currently have flying. This has led people to assume that these objects must be examples of new and extremely advanced technology operated by a foreign power, the obvious suspects being the Russians and the Chinese. It's an understandable assumption, but as anyone with an interest in UFOs knows, UFO sightings are reported all over the world and by thousands of people, most of whom are not military personnel and in situations that do not involve any military hardware or bases. However, given that there are simply not enough people or resources to investigate all the sightings, we can, for the moment at least, focus on what's in front of us, 
by looking at what these journalists have uncovered and, just as importantly, what their editors have allowed them to print, always keeping in mind what we know about Operation Mockingbird. While people were still reacting to the July the 23rd article, the July the 28th article appeared, and the impact of that is probably going to be greater in the long run. Take for example this sentence in the second half of the article, quote, Going from data on a distant object in the sky to the possession of a retrieved one on the ground makes a leap that many find hard to accept and that clearly demands extraordinary evidence." Unquote. This is followed by this paragraph, quote, Numerous associates of the Pentagon program with high security clearances and decades of involvement with official UFO investigations told us they were convinced such crashes have occurred based on their access to classified information." Unquote. And it goes on, But the retrieved materials themselves and any data about them are completely off-limits to anyone without clearances and a need to know. Well, that should raise some eyebrows. To add further credence to this assertion, the article continues and ends with a copy of a presentation slide and two more paragraphs stating, we were provided a series of unclassified slides showing that the program took this seriously enough to include it in numerous briefings. One slide says one of the program's tasks was to arrange for access to data slash reports slash materials from crash retrievals of AAVs or Advanced Aerospace Vehicles. It goes on to say, Our sources told us that AAV does not refer to vehicles made in any country, not Russian or Chinese, but is used to mean technology in the realm of the truly unexplained. They also assure us that their briefings are based on facts, not belief. Now, to use a well-worn cliché, let that sink in. I don't think it needs any further explanation, and yet there is a deafening silence in the media and from some of the commentators that are usually so vocal on this topic. Dr. Stephen Greer did send out this tweet which was quoted in his recent mail shot, quote, To those asking about the recent news coverage of UFOs and references to off-world materials etc, this is an extension of the pseudo-disclosure on the subject that consistently embeds the false flag narrative of a national security threat. The information per se is very old news." End quote. So, are we being duped once again? Are the Tic Tac UFOs, as spectacular as they are, simply a distraction? And even if they were, don't you think we should know how they operate and how the same energy could be used for the benefit of everyone? I will leave it there. If you know more, then by all means enlighten me by posting a comment below, or just post your opinion. Keep watching the skies! Thanks for watching, but don't go yet as I have an important request. Please consider doing one or more of the following. If you'd like me to create a video for you to promote your products or services, go to redspan.com and use the contact form or just leave a comment below. Do the same if the sound of my voice is a fit for your voiceover needs. If you'd like to sponsor more videos like this, go to patreon.com forward slash redspan. Your donation, however small, will help me to improve both the quality and the quantity of my videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it with others. If you have any opinions, questions or feedback, please post a comment. Finally, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of new similar videos. Thank you for your kind attention.